Hello everybody. Say hi. Hi. We are actually on our way to go and look for a marriage certificate. Where are you excited? I was excited. Okay, yay! Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys look later. Oh, Hi guys, so we just finished with um, Sharia House. That is where you get your marriage certificate registration. So, um, the, there are a few things that you'll need. <laughs> Number one is a pen, and then you'll need to have your ID, a copy of your ID, and then uh, what else? What else? What else? Alvin's phone is ringing. A copy of your ID and what? And 600 bob for the first registration. If that is if you want to get married there, if you want to do the AG, AG, AG wedding thing. So if you want to do the church one, they'll just give you a certificate and a date, and then you'll pay a thousand bob, and then now you'll be given the certificate to sign at the wedding. But for us, we've done the AG wedding because. That is going to come so much later and we have so much to do before then so we are going to uh, we're going to do the AG1 so we've been given a date and then now for the second meeting which is on in about three weeks we are supposed to go with our IDs of course your ID is very important especially if you're Kenyans that's what they last for if you're not Kenyan then your passport uh, we we'll need your ID. They want now 3,300 bob, and then both of you have to be present. He was in the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the next time we're going there is in three weeks, and then we'll see what happens there. But in the meantime, we've been having our marriage classes. Why are you holding my hand so far? Because you went, I feel like it went to be hard. No girl who stresses me. Guys, yeah, that's it. <laughs> now we'll show you, we'll show you the marriage classes and basically what we talked about and what we learned. And hopefully you will learn something from it as well. Hey, what's up guys? Um, I know I look a mess. Just listen to what I have to say focus on my voice and not my looks um i just discovered like when you're going for to pay for those ninis those uh marriage things if you're having a church or garden wedding it's going to be a bit more expensive for the garden wedding it's seven thousand two hundred if i'm not wrong that's garden slash church i guess yeah so it's going to be a bit more expensive so anyway um, during our marriage classes, one of the classes, I took the liberty to record some of the things our spiritual father was telling us and all the things we need to learn concerning marriage. And I thought this might benefit someone. <laughs> so it's in the next video. Uh, please share with anyone who you know is getting married. Please share it widely and then also learn from it. If you're interested in getting married remember that marriage has a purpose it's not for sex only so yeah um with that said don't forget to like subscribe and share sharing is even more important than subscribing for this video because the devil is after marriage and he don't want people to get married so if you can share please do so of course i want you to subscribe as well so subscribe bye because people are looking at me funny i'm at kenyatta market <laughs> and these guys are like hey, what is she doing they're just there smiling anyway back to the video oh, and one more thing before i go um this video i'll have to like 
make it a bit longer because there's a lot in between like it takes like three weeks for us to get another an appointment and then it takes another couple of days before you do the uh, the AG thing so I'll have to like bisect it kidogo but this recording was just for our personal keeping but I feel like someone will benefit from it one way or another and everyone needs to know this like I'm convinced beyond any reasonable doubt that everyone needs to know this and also because my spiritual father is the bomb.com and yeah everyone must to know ladies and gentlemen I present to you Sonster Peterson my puppy since you're putting this since you're recording I don't know why we hadn't thought about it from the beginning but just some brief points so that you can have them uh, that we've covered so far we talked about the fact that the purpose of mankind and mankind being not just male but female ma male and female the ultimate purpose for mankind is dominion that's the reason righteous godly dominion so that the planet would be governed under the righteous rule of God. That's the critically important thing, right? Uh, that dominion now, in order to outwork uh, in the earth, if we understand that that is God's purpose, for God's dominion, so as to not have satanic dominion, then you realize why godly kingdom marriage is such a threat to the enemy. So many times people would think that when the enemy is attacking or trying to come in, he's trying to break up a marriage. No, he's not trying to break up a marriage. He's trying to break up the instrument by which godly dominion would be established in the world. So we are stewards of that authority. We are stewards of that authority. That's what the enemy fears. That's what he would like to hinder. So then we go to the garden and we realize that, as I was stating, that in the garden God said, let's make man in our image after our likeness. In other words, what, what we are about to create is going to be born after the God class. Okay? We looked at the fact that everything that God creates by his meticulous design has a purpose to it. Everything. The sun and the moon and the stars were set for signs to mark days and months and years. When the light came into creation, there was a mandate. Let there be a distinction between the light and the darkness. So that now the light can be called day, the darkness can be called night. What is interesting that when we think about light and darkness, we're thinking about the sun, we're thinking about the moon, or incandescent light or something. That light as we know it in the natural was not created until day number four, the sun and the moon, and the stars. So what God is calling light in the beginning, in Genesis chapter one, verse three, let there be light. That has nothing to do with sun and moon. That has to do with the Spirit of God, the life of God itself, which came into creation pregnant with the seeds of everything in creation, right? And again, just to remind us, the reason why I'm going this way, like you can sit in the office of many pastors today and they're gonna to talk to you about, you know, why we should uh, respect each other, and who carries out what duties, and blah, 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 blah. And all of that is good, but all of that must flow from purpose, not the other way around. Not the other way around, right? So, in the garden, God looks at man, all of the animals, all of the living creatures are created by then. Remember, mankind is not created until the evening of the sixth day. He is the crown of the creation. 
by then everything in order to fulfill the dominion mandate must be able to have the ability to be fruitful and multiply. Okay? God creates a lion, male and a female lion, but he doesn't want two lions on the planet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, everybody has to take a trip to the garden no matter where you live to get to see a lion. That was never God's intent, right? So, he creates all these, and then he looks at man as we know, and he says, hey, it's not good. In other words, this will not fulfill the dominion mandate for man to be alone. I want man to fulfill this dominion mandate, but in order to do so, he has to be able to be fruitful and multiply. And in multiplication, his strength becomes more that together they can actually subjugate. And why would even God be talking about subjugation at that point? There was no sin in the creation, but there was an adversary. There was an enemy. And that enemy, God knows, will not sit back and just allow the rule of God to go unchallenged. Because now he is God's enemy. So, what is the object of Satan's attack? It's not the lion, although he's the king of the beast. The lion was not given the mandate to have dominion. The lion was given the mandate to be fruitful, to multiply, but not to have dominion. The eagle, king of the birds, was not given that. It was man that was given that. But now God looks at it, and in order to fulfill what God desired, he, he makes it very clear that it takes male and female. So God said, I will make a helper fit for him. It's a hard thing for many females to be able to receive in the 21st century because we're listening to so much humanism that's trying to come and give us a totally different uh, plan than the original plan of God. You know, when we talk about purpose, when we talk about divine mandates, everything God creates, He mandates, then we also realize that as we were saying yesterday, in order for anything to fulfill its purpose, the source must stay connected, the resource must stay connected to the source. Everything must stay connected to where it came from in order to be fruitful, in order to fulfill its mandate. When it becomes disconnected from the source, the roots are here, the, the power is coming from here. It can no longer fulfill its, its purpose. And that's Satan's whole agenda, get us connect, dis disconnected. So the philosophies of the present day in the present world, humanism, like it's more blatant in our times than it's ever been. Let's replace the family with two homosexuals who can't give birth to anything, but let's through, through natural law, laws based on ideas rather than absolute principles, let's give them the right to adopt babies. Or let's try to create a test tube and make test tube babies. All we need is the sperm and the egg. So all of this is to overthrow the purpose of God. Because animals cannot reflect the full image of God. Only mankind can reflect the image of God. The animals came from the ground, the fish came from the waters, the stars came from the atmospheric gases, you know, everything has its source. But the source of man is God himself. Which says that if we are created not only in his image to look like him, but in his likeness, that means to have his character, his nature and attributes, that means we are quite capable of, capable of handling the devil. But what Satan goes about to do is to try to get into here, get into our minds, because if he can, if his if he can, uh, if his, if we allow his philosophies to dominate our minds, then he owns us, and all of this wonderful resource that we call a mind now is at his disposal. 
So imagine if that is so for a single human being, how much more is it the devil's agenda as it pertains to a married couple in the kingdom and who represent the kingdom? Because alone, the scripture says, I can chase a thousand. But with wonder and I, we can chase 10,000. Uh, that's entering into what I call the 10th power anointing. That's exponential growth potential, so to speak. That's exponential growth potential. So that's something that we must protect. And let me tell you, let me, let me talk to you, Nessie, because one of the things that I do in marrying couples is I always seek to outline the duties of both. And in an actual uh, exchange of vows, I will normally say to the wives, the Bible says, submit your own, yourselves to your own husbands as unto the Lord, for the husband is the head, headship, the government, the, 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 the godly government of the wife even as Christ is the head of the church. He says something to women, he says something to men. And let's face it, nobody knows how we function better than God does. This is not a matter of feminism, humanism, all of that is a bunch of crap. And because we've, con we've begun to embrace those concepts, look around you and see the result of what's going on in our world. You know, see what's going on in our world. So that's part of the reason why I start here. Not just about roles, but purpose. Why did God institute marriage? Is it just so two people could be together? Is it just for the sake of two people loving each other? All of that is good. But all of that is to serve a particular purpose and a mandate that if we serve that mandate we're going to experience the joy of the Lord because in his presence there's fullness of joy you cannot be in his presence and do things your way no matter how much it may feel like it you know more and more as we move from kingdoms to to, to, to democracies we get pumped up pumped up on this right to do what I please and it comes with an attitude that says the right to do what I damn well please. It's that kind of a, you know, you can't tell me what to do. Well, for a husband, he should not have to be telling his wife what to do. For a wife, she should not have to be telling her husband what to do. We should both be plugged into God and wanting to do what pleases the Father because that's where our joy flows from. When we are operating based on his principles. And it's interesting because our father is so benevolent, he will never force you out of your right to make choices. So, getting back now to the place where I said that when God said, I'm going to make a helper, that word helper, King James says a helper or help meet, that's an old Victorian word that means fit. For him and that says again and for the sake of the recording that says that the female is uh, she is uh, what's the word I'm looking for she's she's adaptable she has the ability to adapt she is compatible she is versatile and she is comparable to her mate. She is not beneath him. She is not above him. She's a helper born of his same class. Just like we are born of the God class. Right? But now Peter comes along and he says uh, to give uh, to the wife due benevolence to treat her as the weaker vessel. That word actually means the more delicate. It doesn't mean she is weaker physically or mentally. You know, we know that in physiology and biology that a man has testosterone where a woman produces more in the area of estrogen 
And so, pound for pound, it's not possible for a female to potentially become stronger than a male. They were not designed that way. Because the man was designed to be the protector. If you go back to the garden again, before there was ever a female, God had already told Adam the male what his uh, mandate was concerning creation. He was told, you are to dress the garden, which meant to make it aesthetically beautiful. So there's a creativity and bread within the male for that. Make it aesthetically beautiful, but also, he said, to keep it. And the word keep in the Hebrew is a, is a word that is very much compared to the Greek word tereo, which means to guard and protect against loss or injury. That's why a man is capable of developing more muscle mass than a woman or physically should be able to 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 overpower her in in, in a in a in a contest of, of physical strength why because it was his responsibility to make sure that that garden or as in our case our home is not penetrated it is not wonder's primary responsibility to be the one that calls the family into prayer that's my responsibility not to say she doesn't do it or she can't do that but at the end of the day if prayer cover is lacking in the Peterson home he's not going to seraphim he's not going to wonder he's coming to me because I'm the priest I'm the one responsible for not only calling them but demonstrating that by way of example by way of example you know? like I know in life and in even in a marriage that there are times when a female could have a greater grace for prayer than, than, than her husband because that's her particular calling. You understand? But that has not to do with the actual reality of, of uh, responsibility or authority in the home. That male is responsible before God for being the one that keeps God. See, that was Adam's responsibility in the, in the garden. And because at some point he did not carry it out. And then he turned around on top of that and blamed the woman. You know, at that point, Adam actually still had a choice. He could have chosen not to side with her. You know? There'd be a lot of speculation as to how it would have turned out after that. But he still had that choice. Okay? God said that the woman was deceived. But the male, he went into it eyes wide shut. <laughs> you know, as the movie says, as the movie title, eyes wide shut. All right? So, this to me is the overarching principle from which all of these other things we talk about communication, we talk about sex, we talk about money. The issues of money. Many times is that which the enemy can try to use to bring divisions into a home or sometimes when things are not going good. Females are very sensitive and want to have the reassurance and the, uh, uh, what do you call that, the assurance of, you know, that our needs are being met. Um, and so the enemy can many times use that to try to bring divisions or to bring disagreements, okay? And as important as money is, trust me, like I look at the both of you guys, you, you have the potential to be gazillionaires if you so choose. Seriously, by the gifts and the talents that you have, you can, you, you, your potential to be millionaires, yeah. even billionaires in your own life, if that's what you believe will fulfill your purpose in the earth. Mm -hmm. uh, there are people who will tell you, uh, you should always marry a man who has blah, 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 blah. 
there's nothing worse than a person who has money but no vision. Because there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. And many of them can turn out to be some of the most miserly people. Greedy, cheap. You know? Because they're afraid of losing what they have. So the issues of money, all of those things can always be taken care of. Once you two agree that you're on this journey together, that you are friends in partnership with the purpose of God, and you know, that in that friendship now, you love each other, you are lovers, you are lifetime partners, you are business partners. That's why yesterday when we were addressing the issue of who does what, or how do you determine who does what, that's a non-issue. Yeah. That's a non-issue. Uh, to me, what would be a greater question is, should we be having separate bank accounts? Should we be? And I don't advise that. I don't advise it, not that you can't. Now, here's the reason why I would have a separate bank account for wonder uh, than the family account, is because the family account or accounts are to fulfill whatever the corporate purpose of the family is. But what if she's walking down the street and she sees a thousand dollar dress that she must have? She just likes that one. You know? Doesn't matter that the one beside it is just a hundred and fifty. <laughs> she should be able to have her own money as far as I'm concerned so she doesn't have to come and say, honey, can I? You understand? Which, of course, means that I must be very wealthy. <laughs> I have to be super wealthy. Are you here? I, I did, for me, I, I just believe in, in, in spoiling my wife. I always have to be careful when I start shopping for my wife because... I'm telling you, it's like, you know, oh yeah, let's have this to match with that. Let's, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I think she would look so hot in that, yeah. you know? Yeah. But for me, that's that's the only reason, but not because it's some legalism. Uh, you know, you have your account, I have my account, and it's a competition of who makes the most money. That's a bunch of crap. It's so <laughs> stupid. But it exists in our world, and many people determine position in marriage based on what each other possesses. When we come together, we you don't possess anything anymore we possess together and if that's not what you're doing then you're operating from two different kingdoms and your kingdoms are going to be in conflict at some point or the other there's going to be a lot of clashes you know I've heard women at the advised by other people you know you should have your secret bank account because you never know no. <laughs> like you should never sit and ever listen to people who talk like that. Because chances are that's the same formula by which they destroy their own marriage. It's true. And then they want to be giving people advice because they're miserable. You know? And then trying to make you look like, I'm enjoying my freedom. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. You don't have any peace. Or else you wouldn't be out here trying to espouse this as a philosophy. So, that's why I said that it's important to start first at the purpose. Why are we coming together? Is it just to be together? Yeah. Of course, there are those who ask the question, should we be married for love or should we be married for purpose? That's another stupid question. <laughs> like, we're married for both. You know, as long as we are on this earth and the kingdom has not yet fully come, then we know that there's a purpose for us as individuals. That purpose is to establish God's dominion mandate. It's the same way he was, uh, he told Adam in the garden, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion. The purpose hasn't changed. The purpose hasn't changed. The reason why he needed to have the commission to subjugate which is to, to, to dominate, to bring under, to bring under, to force certain things to be in submission, 
is because God knew that there was an enemy out there. And God already knew that that attack was coming. But still had to give man the right to make the wrong choice because God doesn't create robots. He creates people with a right to choose, a right to have a will. So, yeah, that I think... Oh, I was talking about the fact that he says, giving due benevolence to the wife as the weaker vessel, he says to the man, so that your prayers be not hindered. If you don't treat your wife as that delicate vessel that God says she is, God says that can hinder your prayers. Your prayer life, you, you could pray fervently, you could fast 40 days or 40 nights and be on the wall in prayer every single minute of the day. And God is not hearing anything like, who is he talking to? <laughs> Doesn't he see how he's treating his wife? Like, why is he even coming to me? Yeah. In fact, I'm so tired of hearing him. <laughs> That's how God sees, says your prayers are hindered if you don't treat your wife with that level of love and protection and caring for her. Then on the other hand, he says to the women, he says that, he says, so ought the woman to have authority on her head because of the angels. The authority on your head meaning means that you recognize covering, that you have a headship, that you are willing to submit. And there are gonna be times, and messy. <laughs> there are gonna be times that the enemy is gonna give you a lot of reasons why you should have your own way and why you should do this and why you should do that, and why you shouldn't listen to him and who does he think he is, and on and on and on and on and on. <laughs> right? And it is in such times that you have choices. That time, I, I've come to realize that doing the will of God doesn't always feel good. And society, especially this society, is about feeling good. We determine what is of value based on how we feel or do not feel, not based on principles. And that's why many times we destroy our lives or get ourselves in bondage to Satan because if you want to have a feel good time Satan can give it to you it can come in many different disguises not only flesh, drugs <laughs> alcohol material things you know I mean isn't it amazing that here in Kenya we live in a society where you have women for example like a Avera Sadika, her brand is one that is that other young women should look up to. <laughs> so crazy. <laughs> yeah. I remember some time ago somebody was having some program and talking about bringing her and a few others to speak at a school to tell these girls what. <laughs> How to be a high-class prostitute mm -hmm. <laughs> and call it having a sponsor? Mm -hmm. Like, what do you what do you have to say? Seriously, mm -hmm. that's what the society has degenerated to. People applaud that now. People tune into uh, what do you call it? Nairobi Diaries mm -hmm. or whatever. <laughs> like, I can't miss this. Mm -hmm. Let me see who's going to be screaming at who this week and. You know, who has the attitude to stand up and throw? <laughs> I can't miss it. This is must-see TV. Unfortunately, we don't realize that the more we sit and be open to that is the more we open ourselves to ideas. And then down the road, we start acting a certain way. We don't even know what the root of it is, what the source of it is. We can't detect it. Because you don't get there overnight, honey. You don't just make a decision, you know, one night I'm just gonna I'm just gonna be the, you know, the baddest, most blah 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 female in, in town and you know I'm gonna be the biggest hoe out there. You don't that's not what you don't decide that in a day. That's a progressive slide till you get to a place where afterwards you don't even know how to get back to where you started from. That's how Satan operates. So let me leave it there for today so that I don't give you information overload. 